Last week, Bank of Japan raised rates more than expected. We started to see the markets fall. But then, over the weekend, there was more news about instability, war, and now, Monday morning, we wake up to not just Bitcoin, but all the financial markets pulled lower. What do we do now? Welcome back, everyone. That's right. We are kicking off this week with a bloodbath. It's not just in Bitcoin. It is all of the world's markets. There is a lot of uncertainty. Um, there's the volatility index where we haven't seen this type of volatility in so many years. And of course, right, the future never looked so grim and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So I'm obviously not here to tell you that everything is going to be rosy. I'm not here to tell you that everything is fine. We're going to leave that to the, to the hopium dealers and the ball fluffers. Um, but what I am here to say is this is not a Bitcoin problem. Okay, this is a problem with the markets worldwide, number one. Number two, this is simply just a demonstration of human behavior. Now, uh, you're going to hear a lot of different narratives, right? Like, well, if Bitcoin is a store of value and a safe haven, why isn't everybody piling into Bitcoin? I, I think that people kind of misunderstand this not realizing that Bitcoin is the most liquid asset in humanity, okay? This thing trades 24-7, seven, seven days a week. There are no circuit breakers. There's no JP Morgan halting the market. I understand that some people can come back and say, yeah, well, the exchanges can just halt. Look at what happens to Coinbase. Yeah, sure. Not every single exchange halts, and then there's always BISC and HODL HODL. So the reality is, is that there is... If you really want to be able to buy or sell your Bitcoin for fiat, there is always a method which does make it the most liquid market in the world. Now, double-edged sword on that. Being the most liquid means that you can get liquid as easily as possible through this market. But it also means that when we start to have undesirable market conditions... Well, people can move out of their Bitcoin and choose to sit in cash. Now, I'm not saying that that's necessarily the right thing to do because, hey, every single person's situation is completely different. And anybody who tries to tell you that that's not the case is usually just trying to sell you something. So my point is, is that, yes, everybody's situation is different. OK, um, some people look, some people mentally, emotionally they're not able to handle these types of swings, right? They're not able to handle these types of swings. Other people, it has to do with their financial situations, right? Uh, Vikingo, fellow Bitcoiner, always talks about being solvent. Well, look, if if you're if you're not solvent and you don't have a stream of income, some type of a stream of income, and these types of situations happen, this could put you in a difficult position that you have to, unfortunately, sell some of your Bitcoin. Uh, or I should say exchange your Bitcoin for fiat at an undesirable rate. And of course, undesirable is a personal thing, right? To the to the Bitcoin hodler that's been holding on to Bitcoin since $100 and has been just accumulating it. Do you really think that person is crying when they're selling some of their Bitcoin for fiat at these levels? No, they, they don't really care. Again, Everybody has different situations. Everybody has different tolerances for pain in the market. Anyways, uh, look, the the whole reason why I wanted to make this clip was just kind of to get people to to zoom out, right? This isn't this isn't a crisis of liquidity. This isn't a problem, you know, with like, oh my gosh, the, these wars are starting. Look, everybody knows what happens when wars begin. Okay, yes, it's truly tragic. Absolutely, unfortunately, people die that do not deserve to die, and and all of these other things. Um, the reality is, is that governments, guess what? This allows them to print money. This allows them to inject liquidity into the markets. Now, I'm not saying that is a valid reason for these things. I'm just explaining that no opportunity is going to go unused. So this is right. When you have war, it's an opportunity to create liquidity. When markets start to, when markets start to hemorrhage, right. And people can't quote unquote, handle the pain. 
What do they do? Oh, well, it's a great excuse to inject liquidity. But you see, we're kind of in a in a weird place right now. We're in a between the rock and a hard place. I don't believe the U.S. government can really lower interest rates that much because of the amount of liquidity that they've pumped into the system since 2020. So in all fairness, I'm not really sure what they can do besides continue to print money. If you're selling into this weakness, if you don't have to pay bills, then this is just my opinion. If you if you are not selling to, to pay bills or to make ends meet, then you, in, in all fairness, should not be selling uh, because you're, you're essentially selling into people's fear. Okay. That, that is what's happening. Um, but again, I do, I do acknowledge and understand that everybody's situations are different for the people that are staying solvent for the people that are living within their means. Uh, and for the people who have a good enough, uh, a good enough job that you've got some dry powder on the side, this is definitely a stacking opportunity. I don't see it as such a great stacking opportunity as COVID was, um, which I know that sounds terrible, but it's it's the truth. I mean, we the market pulled back like crazy. And for those of us that had dry powder on the side, um, I can tell you that this was one of the biggest moves that we were able to make. I, I can tell you for, for myself, right? Because that was essentially two years, three years after I had started stacking. And all of a sudden, I got this gift right? This ability to get Bitcoin dirt cheap. And I took advantage of it. And in my particular case, it did become life changing and it made, it, it opened up opportunities for me. So look, uh, I, I know that there's two sides, that there's two sides to this. It is a double-edged sword. Uh, but look guys, this is more about human behavior. Okay. This is a lot less about actual markets. This is a bunch of people overreacting. Okay, these are markets overreacting. And I just don't see the future as that grim. Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I do get that in the near future, it may be grim. But in the grand scheme of things, the future isn't grim. Okay, this is just a bump in the road. Everybody's got to zoom out. Look at the big picture. All right, guys. Good luck out there. Catch you tomorrow.